So we've been asked to talk a little bit about uh, the issue of uh, Diksha Guru, uh, ladies taking post of Diksha Guru in ISKCON. And uh, for us, it is a very kind of nebulous, undefined topic in many ways. Um, I was at the ISKCON Studies Institute in uh, Radhadesh, which is, you know, all Vaishnava scholars, the ISKCON scholars, Radhika Raman, other people, Shona Karishi. And they were talking about what topics they wanted to focus on for the next meeting, because they're doing doctorates in very detailed investigations in Gaudiya Vaishnavism for the past 500 years and different big movements that have had a, garnered you know, tens of thousands of followers for some guru. And some of the deviations were, were you know, it can't be mentioned amongst, the, the, not even amongst the gentlemen, but to speak of ladies and gentlemen, the, how deviated they were in terms of sexual and different you know, improprieties. You know. So they're very informed people. So the topic came up about trying to deal with this topic about, you know, Diksha gurus and ladies in, in, in our Sampradaya. And what basically came up was that, is that, you know, the question of Diksha, ladies as Diksha gurus in ISKCON is, is very, very difficult to even approach because in ISKCON we still really haven't figured out what a Diksha guru is, right? So not knowing what a Diksha guru is and trying to figure out if a lady can be a Diksha guru is even more complicated at that, you know, and so on. So that's kind of my perspective on the topic and I would say in general, to me, it doesn't matter that much. I mean, unless it's a big, big thing, you know, if if, if, if establishing the position of women within ISKCON depends upon them becoming Diksha gurus, it's really insane. You know, that should not be the, the way by which women become established as being women is by being Diksha gurus. You know, you know. And to me also in general, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand the topic and trying to learn things. You know, so I'm, I'm open to all kinds of information. I've seen different papers and things like that and so on. You know. To me, it seems more important that we get the, uh, the titles going Bhakti Vedanta, Bhakti Sarva Boma, and then you can have uh, someone like, uh, you know, Sarva, Sarva Bomin, you know, Ermula Devi Dasi. Okay, respected for erudition and everything else. And then they become more than Diksha Gurus, they become Shiksha Gurus, they, in terms of proper relationships with the proper people. And maybe somebody is taking some lady as his Shiksha Guru. Okay. And, proper varna ashram relationship. Then he asks her, who, who should I take initiation from? He says, okay, you should take initiation from him, him. Okay. You know. So the, um, in Jaiva Dharma, one person is, you know, studying with, you know, Mah, uh, Guru Dev Mahasai Baba, you know. And he says, okay, you're ready for initiation after maybe a few, some months. He said, but I'm 110 years old, so I cannot give Diksha. So there's one thing, there's an age discrimination, because you have to take karma when you do this. So if I take your karma, I'll die, okay? So let's go to Narottam Baba. He's only, only 95 years old. Okay, so they go see Narottam Baba, and he says, Oh yes, if Guru Mahashai says you're ready, it's a great honor for me to take, become Diksha Guru, you know? So, so to me, one aspect of it is that it's a kind of a formal thing. It's a formality, not without meaning, but it's a formality. And therefore, because a lady's position, generally speaking, is shyness and, uh, what makes it shyness, what's the other one? Uh, chastity, yeah. Then it's kind of an awkward situation in terms of the Varna Ashram system like that and so on, you know. So that's another aspect of it. But in general, I mean, as a general principle, I don't think that, I think it, it can be decided on an individual basis, like that, you know. And like Paul was saying, it's not that they haven't been functioning that way. But he said, but it is very rare. Okay. And so that's a sense, you know, and so on. You know. So I guess it's kind of what all, all that I've thought about it. Kind of, the, of course, there's a quote in the story by Dhruva Maharaj, you know, which seems like Prabhupada, a simple one definitive statement, you know. And other than that, um, just that the general principle that Prabhupada could have selected ladies for GBC. He could have selected ladies for sannyas. He could have selected ladies when he was making up the guru list, whatever it meant. You know. But in all those cases, he didn't. And so unless we're really, really advanced and got it all figured out, then why do it? 
you know. It's overemphasizing something which is, which is not, you know, the one football coach, Stanford football team, right, big, big guy. He said, I don't think that because girls can't do, do everything boys do, you know, that makes them inferior. <laughs> That's the thing, they've got to go out and compete in sports, they've got to compete in business. They have to wear business suits, they have to, no. It's a whole different dharma. And so to me, that's, that's the idea is to, at this point, I think it's, you know, it's not, not really appropriate, but I don't think that it's, you know, it can be considered individually, you know, rather than a subcommittee doing it, maybe this the GBC body for certain issues can decide, okay, this person, okay. So thank you very much. And, uh...